Alright guys, welcome to my first EVE guide. This one's going to be about how to farm tier 1 abyssal filaments for as much isk as possible. So this guide is specifically for new-ish players that might not have enough skill points to get into tier 2 abyssal or tier 3, or at least not enough skill points to uh, get into those filaments and actually farm them for isk efficiently. What we're looking here is, um, what we're looking at is how to make 50 to 70 million isk um, per hour essentially running tier 1 abyssal uh, exotic filaments in this warm ship that's over here. So the video is going to be fairly long because I'm going to go over the fit, the skills required, the different weather um, effects that we'll come across in the tier 1 filaments, and then we'll jump into the filaments and we'll show you how to handle most of the spawns, especially the ones that could actually kill you, and how to handle them efficiently, and uh, a few tips and tricks to move uh, through them as quickly as possible. So first, let's go over the uh, economics of farming the Abyss for ISK. So I use the Abyssal Tracker over here. Great website, you can find it on Google, just type in Abyssal Tracker. Uh, it's gonna show you the different ISK range for the different filaments per uh, ship tier as well. And what we're looking for here is a calm difficulty overview. So when we open this up, what we see down here is the median loot for the different uh, types of ships that you can take into the Abyss. We're looking mostly at the frigates over here. So you could take a cruiser, you could take a Gila into the tier one uh, Abyssal filaments, but you make very little isk for your time. Um, so the frigates are definitely the best bet. And the warm fit for the frigate is definitely the most popular as well. So we're looking at 6.51 million isk. However, the 6.51 million isk here per run does not include the cost of uh, blueprints that you'll find as well. So let's see if we can find some, see if we can find a run with some blueprints. There we go. So Kikimura blueprint, this is a great example. Um, can't estimate the blueprint value. However, the Kikimura blueprint will often sell for 20 million on contract. 15 to 12, 20 million is typically what you can get. And on average, we get some of these blueprints every 10 to 15 runs in the tier one filaments. Additionally, you can get some uh, mutoplasmids such as this one that are fairly valuable as well, and these will drop once in a while. And there's another one that drops once in a while as well that will sell for 40 to 60 million for one mutoplasmid. So when you get those really rare 1% drops, uh, drop rate, as you can see here, this is actually a 0.5% drop, and the Kikimura is a 0.73% drop. Uh, so when you get these, it really boosts up your profit margin overall as well. Um, so the idea here is that the warm fit can run the tier one filaments in five to seven minutes per filament if you're paying attention if you're doing it right um, and the beauty behind that is that you can run seven to nine filaments per hour make 55 to 60 million esque just off of the regular loot and then with the blueprints and everything else you can bump up your your profit margin uh, a little bit higher as well currently uh we are during the um the holiday time December, mid-December here. So we have this event going on, um, the yo or however you pronounce that. What this is doing is that it's actually giving us a bunch of, uh, of these filaments here, the 2v2v2 filaments and the uh, 3v3 frigates filament, 506 so far and 416. I got these in just like, I don't know, like 20 rounds or something like that. And I think this is actually replacing some of the regular loot. So unfortunately, Currently, or at least for the next two weeks, I think the loot is going to be slightly less for Tier 1 Abyssals, but it should be back to normal afterwards. Um, and then this is one of these uh, mutoplasmids here. As you see here, it's estimated 72 million in my in my hangar. It's likely less than that because it all depends on how much you can get for it in the market. Um, so that's one of those really rare mutoplasmids there. Otherwise, the uh, Triglavian survey database, this is your bread and butter. This is guaranteed 100,000 million isk, uh, sorry, 100,000 isk per unit. So this stack here is guaranteed 166 million isk for me if I bring it to the right station to sell it to Concord. The zero point condensate is also a very, very stable uh, value on the market. You see it here, estimated 63, uh, 63,900. That's pretty stable. I typically sell mine around 65,000 and it sells pretty quickly. Otherwise, the filaments is another big part of the loot you'll get. Keep in mind, filaments are only only have a value to you if you're able to sell them on the market. Um, so just keep that in mind when you estimate how much money you're actually making. Blueprints, you sell them on contract. Um, I like to sell a few blueprints per stack, um, except for the more expensive ones. So if we go and we take a look at contracts here that are selling for the more expensive ones. Uh, let's go, actually, Leashack is a good example. 
So Lee Shack Blueprints, um, you see here, this is an auction, otherwise auction, auction. These are all auctions, in fact. But typically the Lee Shack Blueprint is going to go for about 50 mil 15 million isk. And then we have the Kikimura Blueprint as well, which is a really um, high value one like we just saw. See, this one is going for 19 million. Uh, it's also an auction by us at 21. And it's the only one on market on the uh, the contract market right now. So this is means you could probably list one at 21, 22, maybe even 25, and you'd probably sell it. Um, so these are pretty high value uh, blueprint copies. Okay, so let's go over the fit. There we go. All right, let's open this up. I called it Warm Mach 6 because I've already lost five of these in the last two to three months of doing Abyssal uh, T1 runs. But that's over doing, uh, I think, six or 700 runs. So it's actually a pretty good ratio. And what you'll see in the Abyss is that it's not, if, if you have the right skills, and if you fit this properly, it's not the other ships that are going to kill you. It's not the enemies that are going to kill you. It's probably more the weather effects, which we'll go over later. Um, so let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, relies on the Arbalest Compact Light Missile Launcher for missile damage. However, missile damage is only 52.6 DPS over um, compared to 203 DPS for the drones. So that's important to know that the your damage on this fit comes from the drones. Uh, running at Tier 2 Extender, Tier 2 Booster. Um, faction micro warp drive and a faction cap battery. Two drone amplifiers too for the low slots and then a couple of important rigs here just to boost up the resistance and boost up my capacitor. We're going to take faction missiles, we're going to take some faction drones and we're going to take some tier 2 drones. The reason for the faction versus the tier 2 drones, um, the faction have extra shield, double the shield in fact of the tier 2 drones which makes them a lot tankier uh, because they have the same amount of shield region time, so they, they also region twice as fast. And this will be important because there is one spawn in the abyss that targets your drones really effectively, and that will try to kill your drones, so you want to use the uh, Caldera Navy Hornets for that. Uh, if you look at the numbers here, 203 DPS for the drones, 54 kilometer drone control range, we'll go over that a little bit later. Um, 384 without uh, the micro warp drive on, with the micro warp drive on, 2700 uh, meters per second. Actually, I actually boost this up to about 3,000 with uh, a few days of skill training, but I don't have an interest in doing that right now. Targeting 36, that's about the max I think you can get, or maybe a bit further with rain, with a few more skills, um, and 5,400 EHP effectively. So you want to look at these numbers, you want to compare these numbers to yours, and just know that if you're not quite there, it's probably some skills that are missing. Cap, uh, so I'm not cap stable, I deplete in 5 minutes and 52, however if I take the uh, shield booster out, I'm very stable, which means that you run the booster when you need it, and then you stop running it when you don't, and you typically won't have an issue um, with your cap in the abyss. So if we take a look at the skills here, this is a fairly important one, especially I get this question a lot, especially from alpha players and omega players, how long is it going to take me to uh, train this fit? So let's just go back to this real quick. Let me show you guys something. I have 255 DPS here. With perfect skills, I calculate I could actually boost this to about 275. I have no interest in bridging the gap of 20 DPS because it would take another two, three months of training to get there. Uh, what do you need though in terms of DPS? This is a really, really, really important question. You need at least 200 DPS to run tier ones without dying. I'd say about 225 to run it somewhat effectively. Um, and to uh, consider it as a, as a decent isk maker. So skill points and skills, let's go for that. First of all, I have uh, 17 million skill points roughly. A lot of this is in planet management and, uh, and industry and stuff like that. That's where I first started. If you wanted to train into this fit from zero, I actually calculated it on another uh, Omega account. It's about two and a half to three months of skill training to get to about 225 or 230 DPS. So that means on an alpha account, it would probably be uh, double that. However, you can start a new account uh, using the link that I'll have in the description of the video and get a million skill point right off the bat. So that would help quite a bit, probably bringing down to four and a half, five months for an alpha player. Specific skills, uh, you need the supporting skills in terms of spaceship commands. Um, the fit itself, the worm, relies a lot on Galante Frigate skills and uh, Caldari Frigate skills. So the Galante Frigate will give you an extra 10% bonus to your missiles um, for each skill level. And the Caldari Frigate bonuses will give you more shield resistance. So that's a good place to start. 
Additionally, uh, navigation, these will be important to get you to the speed you need to go at. Engineering, you want to look at the capacitor system operation. I have level five. Capacitor management, I have level four. CPU management is level five. So you just want to make sure these skills are high enough for you to get similar numbers as what I have. Um, shield, these will be important to get your um, resistance numbers up to similar to mine and will be important to get to your total shield numbers up similar to mine as well. Most importantly, however, I'd say it's the drone skills. So down here, uh, light drone operation, gotta be a level five for sure. Drone interfacing, I would also recommend a level five as well. This gives you in total an extra 50% damage to your drones once you get it to level five. Drone avionics level five gives you an extra 25 kilometer total in terms of uh, drone control range, which will be really important. Advanced drone avionics, that's only for mega players. Um, I have level three and that's what gives me total, I think 55 kilometer drone range, let's see, 54. And you need, a, I say you, you need at least 40 kilometer uh, in terms of drone range here, which means drone avionics, I believe needs to be trained probably to level five to get you there. Caldari drone specialization level three going on level four. This gives you the 200, over 200 DPS for your tier two drones. Um, and otherwise, it's pretty much it. You will want to train drones to level 5 as well. Otherwise, I think that's it. And yeah, that's it for the skills. So expect two and a half to three months as an Omega player. And uh, double that minus maybe a little bit if you take the uh, million skill point bonus when you start your new account as an Alpha player. All right, let's also go over additional weather effect in the abyss. So first let's go over the filament itself. So the filament is going to be the calm exotic filament. We'll give you the exotic particle storm. Ships receive a penalty to kinetic damage resistance and a bonus to scan resolution. Scan, scan resolution, don't really care about. It's the kinetic resistance penalty that's important. And that is why on the fit we are using here the hornets because they do kinetic damage and we are using uh the navy scourge light missiles because they also do kinetic damage as well okay so you're doing all kinetic damage you're going to have a kinetic uh resistance penalty but your enemies will also have the same resistance penalty so you'll be able to do more dps so additionally let's go over more weather that you're going to come across in all of the different abyssal filaments that you go into it's going to be little pockets of mists either white blue or red mists the white mists will boost your maximum speed by 300 percent which means on this fit here once i'm simulated i could cap out at 8400 meters per second the blue cloud will boost your signature radius by 300 percent so that means i'm now instead of being a 246 square meter ship i'm now a 750 square meter ship which is really important because it means you're easier to hit for guns and you'll take a lot more damage from missiles so you got to keep that in mind and then finally, the red cloud is going to reduce your shield booster duration by 40% and reduce your shield booster total boost amount by 40% as well, which means you almost need to run your shield booster twice as much to get the same amount of shield boost, which burns your capacitor much faster. So those are three extra little clouds of weather that you want to be careful of. Um, when I mentioned earlier, this was the Mach 6 because I had already lost five. Most of the five I lost to the white cloud because it boosts your maximum velocity by 300 percent when you go through it if you peak out at eight kilometers per second you can fly outside of the abyssal dead space really quickly and when that happens you start taking exponential damage further away from the pocket you are into the, the dead space um, so that has killed me definitely more than anything else so you want to be very mindful of that okay so the strategy with this fit is that we're going to go for the cache and we're not going to go for the extra nodes on most spawns will orbit the cache except for the battleship spawns will actually orbit the battleship we don't go for the extra nodes because a there's not enough loot in them and b if there's a tachyon cloud one of the white clouds around the node it's very easy to overshoot the node and fly outside of the pocket since most of the nodes are on the outskirt they're sort of on the edge of the pocket so it's very easy to overshoot them and to die outside of the abyssal dead space, dead space pocket so that's the number one part of the strategy and then the second part of the strategy is when we have battleships we'll orbit them when we have spawns that can kill you we'll either orbit the gate or orbit the cache at 20 15 to 20 kilometers so that you retain enough speed to outrun them outrun their missiles 
um, and make it really hard for them to track you and to hit shots on you, okay? So that's most of the strategy. Uh, the reason why I orbit the cache on most of the easy spawns, I orbit the cache at 5,000 meters so that I'm already close to the cache when the spawn is dying, so it's easier for me to loot it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the strategy, the fit, and everything else. Now let's jump into some of the filaments. So let's grab what we need. First things first, calm exotic filament. Let's grab a nice stack of 30 here. Let's grab the missiles we need as well. 800 should do. So like I mentioned earlier, this is my first time recording a video, recording a, a guide for EVE. So if you could let me know in the comments what you think, give me any feedback, as much feedback as possible, I would really appreciate that. Also, let me know what else you'd like to see. I like to do really in-depth guides, especially for newer players, because it's a bit frustrating as a new player when you start to watch um, guides from players that have like quite a lot of skill points and then you don't really know how to get there, what to do first and whatnot. And it's, it can be a little frustrating for sure. So let me know what you guys would like to watch. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm warping to a safe, uh, safe location. I'm not running the Abyssal sites anywhere near, well, a few jumps away from a trade hub. I try to run them in systems that are a little bit more quiet, just so that I'm not exposing myself to a gank, even though this ship is not very expensive. Eventually, when I start running uh, Tier 3, Tier 4 and up with Gila's and stuff, uh, it's just a good habit to not be in a system where you can easily lose your 500 or you know, higher million ship. This is a new overview here. I like to have my velocity on the side. We'll see how this overview performs in the Abyss in just a bit. The velocity I find is fairly important for uh, seeing how fast your enemy is moving in the Abyss so you can kite them more easily. Just form fleet with myself here. And let's hop into it. If you guys want to subscribe to the channel as well, I'm going to be trying, like I mentioned, to release more of these. And if you subscribe, you'll be able to see them when they come out. All right, a Tesla room. Very simple room, probably the easiest room of them all. So we're gonna go and orbit the cache here. Um, you hold W and you click the cache, you'll orbit it automatically. I'm gonna start targeting these ships here. Um, so these are fairly small ships. They don't take quite a bit of DPS to handle. So I'll typically put my drones and my missiles in the same one, and then I re-engage a drone immediately, and I disengage my drones immediately. Just because I don't wanna waste DPS. And then as soon as my missiles are available again, missiles on this one, and I should have a drone that's gonna, let me see here. Happening. Okay, he is targeting his class. <clears throat> Perfect time here on this just single one and a single one. Uh, there was this weird update not but just a few days ago, basically, where they changed the aggression of the drones. Apparently, uh, what they did is drones wouldn't auto aggress anymore, uh, and then they reverted it back just a few days later. So let's actually approach the cash here. So at this point, uh, almost everything's gone. I could have been on the cache already. The reason why I don't approach the cache typically right off the bat is just so that I keep a little bit of velocity in my ship if I'm orbiting the cache. So it makes it harder for them to hit me. I don't need to run the shield booster as much. Um, and it's just a good thing to uh, to go into the next room with, uh, with a decent amount of cap available just in case we go into a room where there's some neuters and stuff like that. So I like to have my cap as... Uh, as full as possible here. You can see a lot of these filaments here that are not worth much. I'm pretty sure it's replacing some of the real loot right now, which is a bit of a bummer, but whatever. It's part of the game. What do we have here? Striking Leashack. All right, uh, another one of my favorite rooms here. The Leashack is a battleship, but it's definitely the easiest uh, to handle. We'll just launch a drones here for a bit. I'm not even gonna bother um, uh, Kai take him to get into the orbit here. My drones are already engaging. That's good. Just put the missiles on him and turn on the shield booster. Leashai goes down very quickly. Uh, his damage does ramp up when I'm orbiting at 5,000. It doesn't really... You can't really hit me at this range anymore. See, he's already down. Very, very quick. Approach the cache. Target the cache. Um, put the drones on the cache. 
I like to use the drone for the cache because the missiles take a while to cycle, so they're not always available. It's just good habit. Also, I guess you save a few uh, missile volleys. Doesn't really make a big difference profit wise, but eh, I guess it kind of adds up. With this and on to the next one. So with the right fit, with the right amount of DPS, you can handle these very quickly. I've already got two room down, and uh, it's, it's just been three minutes. <clears throat> Here, this all over mine and um, two Teslas with it. So this all over mine is actually the one that uh, probably takes the longest to kill. Oh shit! All right, whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up. No, no, too fast, too fast. Okay, it's over again. Uh, what just happened there? That was attack on cloud. I went through it, and you see how fast I shot out of it. Now imagine if that cloud was twice as big and it was on the edge of the pocket. I would just fly right out of the pocket. So you want to be very careful with those. It's one thing that will kill this fit the most, is attack young club. Drone on the battleship, missiles on the smaller targets here. I'm only taking damage from the Teslas right now because the battleship can't actually hit me at this distance anyways. This is important here. I've set my, uh, my orbit for 5,000. You can change this. I like 5,000. Uh, you see here I'm orbiting him. I'm trying to orbit him at 5,000. I'm actually orbiting at 76. Uh, but I'm right around 2,000 meters per second. So it's a good speed. Uh, it'll make the Teslas... It'll make it harder for the Teslas to hit me as well. Uh, and we'll just have to slowly power down the the battleship here. He's got a lot of VHP, so it's, it takes a while. Alright, so on this battleship, I don't think he's got a lot of HP on the hull, so it actually goes down fairly quickly on the hull, so that's why I'm already approaching the cache here. Um, because I don't mind basically taking a shot or two from him, he's probably going to hit me here, yeah, and he's probably going to hit me again. And my, my missiles are done cycling here, I'm going to blow up the cache. Let's open it up, come on, open it up. Perfect. And now let's approach the conduit. And um, as I approach the conduit, now he's gonna miss me. I take some risks, but it's because I have I have enough experience to know what shots he's gonna hit, what shots he's gonna miss. So as he dies here, I'm gonna hit Shift R. My drones are gonna come back to me, and right as soon as they're back in the cargo hold, we go through that film. We go through the game, and that was basically six minutes and uh, ten seconds, roughly, to get this one. Alright, so I just gotta wait for this filament to be done before I can launch a new one. So we'll just, just hit Control R, that's gonna recharge my missiles. Um, hotkeys are important. Control uh, Shift F will launch your drone. Control, uh, sorry, Shift R will get the drones to go back in the, in the hold. Um, when you just hit F and you have a target um, selected, that's gonna send the drones on it. We're just gonna recharge the shield here, and this filament should be good to go. I also need to get rid of this timer up here, so I'm gonna move just a little bit to get rid of that timer, otherwise I wouldn't be able to start new filament. Double click the filament, activate for fleet, and then I just hold D, and I just click on the filament, and it gives me the option to, uh, to jump into it. I can turn off the shield booster, and we hop into our second one here. Alright, so this is a Lancer room. Um, with my current level of skills, I can handle all of the different variations of Lancer rooms by just orbiting the cache. So I put the cache 500. This is a Lancer and two frigates. Um, it could be anything from a single Lancer and two frigates, or um, two Lancers, one frigate, or three Lancers. In all cases, I can just orbit the cache and uh, I'll be fine. What happens here, the Lancer, they, they shoot um, missiles at you. So the faster you move, the less damage you'll take from the missiles. That's the beautiful thing about it. So orbiting the cache moving at 2,000, I don't take that much damage from them. 
I can show you guys later too if we hit one of the martial rooms I can show you guys um, just how much of a difference speed makes against missiles and show you how much damage I take uh, max speed versus very low speed and you'll, you'll be quite amazed. Alright so I've already killed everyone. I could have already been on the cache. This is another one where I could have approached the cache right after the Lancer was dead. Um, let's put the drones on it here. I'll also stop my ship because I know I'm probably going to overshoot it. Double click the, the loot cache there, the, the wreck, and it reapproaches it and automatically opens it. Alright, this is a Karen, and right here I was in another Tachyon Cloud. Take a bit of damage from her. Now let's go orbit, launch the drones. So she's with a Lancer. Sometimes there's also a frigate that spawns with that, which is quite a big spawn for uh, a tier 1, in fact. Uh, but the Karen herself is not a lot of trouble to deal with. You just orbit at 5,000, kill the Lancer first, and then after that we'll take care of the Karen. If there was a Tachyon Cloud right around her, if she wasn't a Tachyon Cloud, she could fly much faster than 300 there. She could fly up to 900 meters per second. In that case, I would actually orbit closer and I would manually select the speed down here. So if I'm in a Tachyon Cloud and she's flying at 900 and I can fly at 8,000 meters per second, um, I want to be careful of manually selecting my speed. I would probably try to orbit her at 1500 and then select about 2000 meters per second for the speed or something like that to not do loops that are too wide around her. Because if I do, what's going to happen is she's going to try to fly away from you and she's going to fly towards the border. Inevitably, she flies towards the border. And uh, what happens when, when she flies towards the border and you're orbiting her at 8400 meters per second is eventually when she's close enough to the border, you're going to be dipping outside the border and taking damage from the abyssal dead space while she's like just kind of staying on the edge of the border kind of thing. So you want to be careful with that. Karen is another battleship that um, you take about 250 damage from her per ship per, per hit. Um, so right around now I'm going to start to approach a cache. Uh, she's going to take a bit more damage from the drones. And right as I'm about like 12 kilometers, 13, I'm going to launch my missiles. There we go. And that's destroyed. Open it. Shift R to get the drones to come back. Let's reapproach it. There we go. Loot 6.5 mil. That is great. Thank you very much, RNG. What was in there? Did it just filaments? Fierce electrical? Oh, it's a fierce electrical filament. Yeah, there we go. That's a 4.6 mil filament. I'll probably end up using that one actually when I start learning tier threes. Probably won't sell it. All right. This is a devoted room, so these guys can actually kill you. Um, less now that I have slightly higher skills, but before they were definitely a much bigger threat. I'm going to orbit the gate here at 20. Um, there is possibly a Tachyon Cloud here. You might hit into it, I'm not sure, we'll have to see. We just gotta power everyone down here. They do a decent amount of damage. Um, <clears throat> this is not the worst variation of this room. A couple of torch bearers will make my signature radius bigger because they're target painting me. Um, and the hunter is the one that's doing the most damage there. You can see the damage coming in from the hunter and whatnot. There's definitely a tachyon cloud down here, um, so we do want to be careful with that. The reason why I'm orbiting the gate here is because um, I want to orbit um, at a much bigger orbit, just so that I'm moving faster and I'm harder to hit. Um, if I tried to do that on the cache, if I tried to orbit the cache, say, at 10 or 15, I might actually bump into the gate. However, if I orbit the gate at 10 or 15, the cache is a lot smaller, so my odds of bumping into it are a lot lower. See, most people are dead here, so I'm actually just going to approach a cache. It's only a torchbearer left. I can easily tank him. Um, definitely a lot easier for me now to handle all of these spawns, but a month ago it was a very different story when my skills were a lot lower. My DPS just wasn't there to get rid of them fast enough, so they would eventually... Um, out DPS, what I could uh, recharge with my shield recharger. Alright, let's keep going.
Devoted Knight. Uh, okay. This guy is very hard to deal with. Um, you need a decent amount of drain, drone control range to deal with this guy. You basically need to get close enough to put your drones on him and then get the hell out of there and keep him at um, over 50. I'd say if you can keep him over 50 kilometers. So I'm just double clicking here uh, in a direction to get my ship to go in that direction. I need to turn this shield this round. His tracking is so insanely good. Um, Okay, so I have 54 kilometers in drone control range, but um, my drones will keep hitting him even if I'm over 54 kilometers from him over here, okay? Uh, and this is a weird way that um, the DI works here. I don't know if it's, I don't know how far I could push it, but I can push it pretty far, which is why I was saying earlier, as long as you guys have about 40 to 42 kilometers of drone control range, you'll be able to kite him, okay? Now he's not hitting me. It's because I'm far away from him. And it's the only way you can kill this guy, by the way. Um, I, very close to mission. Am I taking damage here? No, okay. Whew, that was close. Um, at very, very close range, or within like 20 kilometers, he's actually going to mute you and whip you, I believe, as well. Um, so he's just going to destroy you, completely destroy you, and you won't have enough DPS to uh, kill him basically faster than he can kill you. And he's constantly trying to, uh, to get closer to me here, which is why he's at 54. Uh, so it should be going down shortly here. It's definitely one of the rooms that takes a little bit longer to deal with. Alright, he should die soon. I'm going to start approaching the cache. I'm taking these risks because I I know him well enough to know roughly how much um, HP he's got. See, no longer present, so that was perfectly timed. Um, when you do fly away from this guy, you want to be really careful with the tachyon clouds. You want to make sure you avoid the tachyon clouds. This is one of the rooms where it's a lot harder to mitigate the risk um, because you have to free fly. You can't anchor, orbit around something, or keep something at range. You have to free fly, so it's it's a little bit more convenient, but still make it work. Um, I'll need to reapproach this. All right, what was that? Uh, that was in the second room, yeah. Second room and more than four minutes and a half. <clears throat> By the way, when this timer goes to zero, you die. So keep that in mind. Villa Damvix, these guys have drones. Three drones each. Don't worry about them. Orbit the cache. Target the ship. Don't target the drones. Put your drones and your missiles. Uh, power them down. And you can turn on your shield boosters only if you need them. Uh, their drones are going to target yours most of the time. Sometimes their drones will target your drones, but you should be able to kill the Damvix before uh, see the yellow box in here. Oh no, okay, yeah. It's just the Damvix that we're targeting my drones. We should be able to kill the Damvix before you take significant damage or before your drones take significant damage. <clears throat> Alright. One down. Retarget the drones. This is important here. If your drones are just on auto-aggress auto and you don't retarget them on the Damvix, they're probably going to target the Damvix, uh, the swarmers. I'm going to put one volley of missiles on the Damvix until I've stabilized around the cache here. I'm going to disengage right away the missiles and then get ready to blow up the cache and move to the uh, to the gate. Turn this off. Let's blow up the cache. Blow up the cache. Do it. Now we're going to approach the gate. And um, as soon as my missile is complete, I think I should. Ah, no, not worth it. Really about to kill. My drones are coming back to me, and I'm ready to move on to the next one. On. How long was that? Uh, six minutes and uh, 20 seconds. Alright, so it's been three filaments and I'm at 21 mil. 21 mil does include my missiles that I brought with me and my filaments that I brought with me, which is both together worth about one mil. Um, so I'd say 20 mil for three filaments. It's a little lower. Wait, is it? No, it makes no, it makes sense. Yeah, that's roughly what it is. Um, we haven't gotten any really good blueprint copies yet, but that's okay. We'll probably get some today. 
All right, and this filament is ending now. Filament, uh, it lasts an extra 30 seconds, which is half of the blue timer that you see up here, by the way. I'm going to try to just show you guys spawns that are important at this point. We're not going to re recomment on the spawns that we've already seen. I'll just um, cut the video and reopen the video on spawns that are important. <clears throat> All right, let's start recording again. Um, orbiting the origin cache, origin uh, gate here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't want to die here. Okay. Launching the drones. Uh, this is another Concord room. Uh, these guys all shoot missiles. They do quite a bit of damage, which is why I'm orbiting the gate at 20, so I have as much speed as possible. Um, sometimes these guys will spawn in with a Skybreaker. I believe that's the name of it. The Skybreaker uses one of those Vorton projector that chains lightning. Um, so if you orbit the cache and you get hit by one of those uh, chained lightning, it's also going to destroy the cache as well, and you'll lose your anchor to the cache. So you'll actually go shooting out into space. So no matter what on this room, I always orbit the gate and not the cache. Um, but the main reason is so I can get up speed because these guys' missiles do uh, a decent amount of damage. And why did I lose one here? Oh, 46. Yeah, so he's starting my drones, uh, which is a good thing because it takes DPS off of me. Uh, he's probably not going to hit my drones, and my drones will probably attack him. Yeah, they won't. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of that and just go to the gate, uh, to the to the cache. There's no point for me to try to get back close to him and try to engage him. By the time I blow up the cache, I do my thing over here. My drones will have killed him, and I can go through the. I can go through the gate. See, just like I said. All right, started recording again. I want to show you guys this room. Uh, the Kiki and the Damovic. The Kikimora is your number one target. I'm orbiting the gate here at 15 to get enough speed. Um, the Kiki's damage will ramp up. She's going to try to target your drones for a little while and then she typically switches to you. Um, and you just want to take her out first because her damage does ramp up and eventually she could out damage your shield booster. Out DPS your shield booster. Right now it's taking her a while to target me. I'm not sure why typically at this point she's already started to put damage on me but okay she's dead great no damage taken that's amazing take out the damvik and as i'm taking out the damvik i will approach the cache here to try to be uh, as as fast as possible once again All right, attacker Marshall, may as well cover it, especially when you've got a tachyon cloud. Attacker Marshall, we would normally orbit at 25, but the tachyon cloud will orbit at 15. Um, the reason for the difference here is because the tachyon cloud might shoot us um, further out. The other reason is because I'm gonna be orbiting closer, uh, he's gonna have less of an op opportunity to move away from me. And uh, the advantage of that for me is that he is less likely to go into the tachyon cloud and start moving very, very fast, right? Um, am I going to hit the tachyon cloud here? No, I'm not. Uh, maybe. Maybe I will. It's right here. You can see the edge of it. So, and right now I'm 17k out. And I think on my next round, I'm actually going to be a little bit further away. Now, the point here of orbiting this guy further away is he's shooting heavy missiles at you. I'm taking 168 damage here. That's pretty much the average, to be honest, um, when I'm hitting the speed at 24. But now let me show you what happens when we lower the speed to 16. Okay. This one was 190. And let's see what happens on the next one. 225. See what happens there? It's uh, 30, 55. 55 damage difference per missile. It makes a pretty, pretty, pretty big difference. Especially given that my mod here heals 35 HP per two seconds. So basically 17 per second. All right, let's make sure. See, this is a really dangerous one here because um, the marshal died. I started just floating freely in space and then I went straight into the tachyon cloud. Um, 
two more seconds and I would have probably been outside of the bubble. Maybe three seconds I would have been outside the bubble. Lucifer Cinebal. All right, let's orbit this. 25, launch drones. We want to take care of the Dramiel first. This is one of those spawns that can actually kill you. So we want to take care of the Dramiel first and the Cinebal after. Put drones and missiles on the Dramiel. Should take him fairly quickly. What you want here is uh, speed against the Cinebal. That's really, really, really important. Cinebal will mute you as well. So launching, sending the drones onto the Cinebal immediately. And as soon as my, as soon as my, uh, my missiles are available, we'll put the missiles on as well. So this is a spawn that can actually kill you. You see how quickly I'm going down here. Um, am I still orbiting the cab? Uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, so I, I orbit the gate here. See, because you're further away, he can't newt you as much, which is why speed is really important. You see here his top speed, 1400, 1600, so we can actually get away from him pretty effectively. Um, I actually wouldn't mind getting completely out of range for my missiles. I have 37k um, in range there for my missiles. Uh, but he does get, like, sometimes it does get really, really fast, which is pretty crazy for a cruiser, like 2k, right? It's pretty crazy. Um, let's, while we're doing this, let's add this to overview... Add precursor cache or you there we go okay now we can approach the cache all right and we are recording again this is a tesra it's a battle cruiser we'll orbit her at 20 kilometer and we'll launch the Kalnari navy hornets so this is our faction hornets over here um now i'm not in the blue cloud yet but i think i might go into it at some point so it might change how we play this out but typically you orbit her at 20 kilometers because uh, she can't hit you at 20. You use the Caldera Navy Hornets because she is eventually going to target your drones and try to take them out. She's going to keep trying to catch up with you as well, but you don't have to worry about that because you're moving way too fast for her. Alright, and Blue Cloud, let's see if she hits us. No, she missed us. Okay. Again, and, and she's still missing. Okay, that's good. And now she's targeted the drones. She's yellow box, so she's targeting my drones. And you see she's already put some decent damage. Whew. So that second shot was pretty good there. All right, and that's why we use the Navy Hornets. Shield's already recharging. I'm going to relaunch the drones. Um, now, this time I've launched the Hornets since um, my group one is my favorite for launching. So let's just go ahead and hope that she doesn't target my drones again before she's dead. She shouldn't though, because she typically goes down pretty quickly at this point. I'm going to already approach the cache just because, um, yeah, she's got very little haul HP and no haul resistance. So she takes a lot of damage. Here. All right, just want to go over this one real quick. This is a Damovic room, Damovic only. Um, pretty easy room to handle, same as usual. Orbit the cache, put your drones on them and your missiles on them. Now, just so you know, this tower over here, the um, Deviant Automata Suppressor. Your drones will take damage from that. Just a little bit though, nothing to worry about really.
All right, guys, it's been about an hour here. I believe I undocked at 3.50 p.m., so 4.51. Let's go and dock back up again. Let's take a look at what we got. Um, okay. And let me chat Active. with you guys a little bit more while I do that and before the video ends. So likely, um, I didn't see all the different spawns that I wanted to show you guys. So likely, I'll um, keep recording specific spawns and put them into the video before this moment. So you've already seen most of the spawns at this point. Um, but it might not have been in the exact timeline that I actually played this game. However, what I have in my inventory here is requested. exactly uh, what I got accepted. in the last hour. So let's go over that together. All right, so we're here in station. Let's debrief. Let's take a look at what we got in here. So first of all, I'll take the missiles out and the filaments that are left. Let's see where that is. Great, the commas out of filaments. So I believe I ran eight filaments, which would give me 24 filaments used out of the 30, which means I found an additional five throughout all of that. Um, so if we take those out and we just take a look at what this gives me, the, the appraisal here, 68.5 million ISK. Let's just take a look. 68.5 divided by eight, 8.56. So a bit of a higher average today. Uh, I am curious to see how much Eve Prazel will give me for this. So let me just log into Eve Prazel here. And we just come here, we do Control A to select it all, Control C to copy it. Just bring up Eve Prazel here, Control V, submit. So this will give me the Jeta price for all of this. So um, all this stuff here, can't really know exactly how much it's worth, and we'll go through that together. But basically sell value 68 or 69 mil, uh, buy value 63, which means I could sell it buy and make 63 million off of what I had in my cargo here. So these blueprint copies up here, um, not really worth much, probably 1 to 1.5 million in total. However, the Dracovac, let me show you guys how the Dracovac works. So right now on contract, um, we've got a bunch of auctions here with no buyout current bid uh, highest 12 million. I've sold a lot of these for 20 million um, a piece on contract, but let me show you something else, okay? So if we go into industry, say you wanted to actually build the ship and sell the ship instead of just selling the blueprint. Come on, there we go. Okay, so all of our materials here, it's estimating 88 million. And in reality, that's just, this is the average of the market. So if you were to just buy the materials at sell price, it would probably be closer to 95 million. And estimated 121 million for the ship. Let's see if that's actually the case. <clears throat> yeah, so people are selling 119, 120, then 135. So you could probably sell this ship at 120 in Dodixie, um, and it would sell very quickly because we see the other ones in Dodixie here are quite a bit higher. So in reality, this blueprint, if you have the patience and the money to build the ship, this blueprint is actually worth more like 30 million. So if we both get, go back to what I got here, in the one hour that I played, I pretty much got a hundred million worth of loot flying in T1 filaments, a worm, which you can get into in two and a half months, three months as an Omega. Now, obviously today I had slightly higher loot than usual, but it's just a good, uh, a good example of what is possible. So on that note, guys, I'll end the video here. Um, do hit the subscribe button so you see my next videos that are going to come out. They're going to be similar tutorials. Let me know in the comments uh, what you liked about this video, what you disliked, if you'd like me to, if you'd like me to record differently to show you guys something different, what else you'd like to uh, to see me review and stuff like that. And if you could hit that like button, that would help me out a lot. It would also help um, other players to find this video and find the information. Thank you so much, guys, and fly safe. Peace.